Hi, this is Lynn Keller, and you are watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today on location from Hollywood, California, with our special guest today, Lynn Keller. Hello, Lynn Keller. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm just thrilled to be here on a gorgeous sunny day. There's not a fire anywhere, it's not raining, there's not an earthquake today. It's a good day. I, you know, you're making me feel very positive. It <laughs> it's, feels good to be around you. Let's talk about you and bass and your career and Great. stuff like that. I seem to recall you are originally from Illinois. I'm from Chicago. From Chicago. Suburbs. Suburbs. Chicago suburbs, Niles, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. I've been there. I think I played yeah. there one time. Okay. Yes. All right. And uh, I know you spent a lot of time in Texas, and I know your resume reads like a who's who of prominent musical luminaries, everybody from Diana Ross to Rita Coolidge to the original Fifth Dimension, and I know you worked with Nell Carter and several others, but l l let's let them hear you talk instead of me doing all the talking. Okay. Tell me about your initial exposure to music and how you became a bass player. Well, I became a bass player by being a flute player. Uh, that's what I did first. Um, I started playing flute and piano very young and, and ended up going to the University of Illinois at Champaign and was a flute major. They and say Champaign or Champaign-Urbana? We used to call it Shampoo Banana. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I was in Champaign and I was a flute med major and didn't love the professor I was studying with and kind of decided, well, I think I'm going to try something else. And there was a wonderful woman I knew at the time, and I was playing in a all-women's rock band. I was playing piano. And she said to me, do you want to play bass instead? I said, well, what does it do? And I, so See what I, your left hand does? That's what the bass does. Exactly, right? So her boyfriend brought me a different bass to every single rehearsal that we had. And long story short, I never put it down. I eventually went back to school at the University of Texas at Austin, um, got a degree in theory comp, but at that time, electric bass was not a major. So I had to go back and declare flute again as my major. So went back and studied and had an amazing professor at that point, um, but had a great time playing bass and I started working very early on and just worked all the time. Just a tangent, when you said University of Texas Austin, I remember having a, a textbook called The Technique of Orchestration by, yeah, was Donald it Kent? Grant? Oh, Kent Kennan. Oh, Grantham, yeah. Uh, Donald Grantham, Kent Kennan. Kent uh, Kennan was the uh, one. Yes. So obviously that was years yes. before you were there, but I wonder yeah. if his vibes are still somehow they were still, permeating. They were there when I was there. I studied with Donald Grantham composition, okay. yeah. Wow. Carl Corte and Donald Grantham, and it was, an amazing school. Rick Lawn was the head of the jazz oh. department. I was in, in the, uh, the big band. I read one of his, uh, I remember studying out of one of his arranging books, yeah. Rick Lawn. It had a blue cover with gold letters on uh, it. He was, he was an inspiration, and still is. Yeah, yeah, he's doing well. Okay, well, when you say your career got started, what does that mean? What were you doing? You know, I was part of the Austin scene, which was, I worked six nights a week, basically on 6th Street, playing and I didn't do country and I didn't do Americana I did jazz which is interesting jazz and pop I played numerous nights a week at the Sheraton or the Lakeway Yacht Club all um, on the electric bass all on electric bass you ever, you ever play upright bass uh electric upright I have a kid oh yeah um KYDD -D? -D -D, yeah. which I love it's a 30 inch bass it's it's sort of like a, a telescope on a tripod <laughs> but it sounds great. It really does. Yeah. A big, thick, beautiful, warm sound. So um, so back in those days, I was working all the time and ended up getting hired by Olita Adams. Uh, I went and auditioned for her, and she hired me, and I ended up moving to Kansas City and working with her for the next number of months until the gigs ended. This was before her Tears for Fears days. And uh, I decided, well, it was time to move to L.A., and I did that in 1986. And you've been here ever since? I've been here ever since. Uh, and I've been very lucky to work with wonderful, wonderful musicians. Uh, one thing led to the, no to, to the next thing, you know. Um, early on, I was house band in Bentonville, Arkansas. That's, yeah. that's Walmart country. It, yeah. Um, Sam Walton. Um, John Phillips, I worked for them. 
and uh, I was part of the house band every year and backed a lot of celebrities and one of the celebrities that was on the gig was Rita Coolidge and we really enjoyed each other she was just amazing and it was within a few months I got a call from her publicist at the time asking if I'd like to do a gig with her and of course I was over the moon and that was around 1991 and Did you play your love has lifted me higher it lifted me higher for a lot of years is yes. that like Mac the knife it keeps going up a half step as I recall <laughs> no oh. no it, it, it you know maybe up one half step and that's about as far as it got okay. but yes you would know. Yeah, I, I was uh, lucky enough to work with her for a lot of years and become her music director. I was with her for about 14 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know there's a lot more that we can talk about, but what, what's keeping you busy these days? Um, it, it's interesting how life shifts. Uh, in 2004, I got an offer from a contractor in New York wanting to know if I was interested in doing a Broadway show, a tour, first national tour. And I thought to myself, well, gosh, that's kind of something I hadn't really done other than a few regional things. So I accepted the tour, and because of that, I ended up doing a slew of shows for Alan Menken. Um, whenever he want, needed electric bass and somebody that did pop, he would bring me in. So I was able to do Little Shop of Horrors with him, Sister Act with him, and all the readings that went along with it and the first national tour of that, uh, and Leap of Faith, which premiered on Broadway and unfortunately closed uh, about six weeks after, but it was a great show. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I did a ton of that, the Broadway, uh, the, the touring and yeah. locally. Okay. Pamphlet B contract, oh, I remember. Oh. Yeah, yes. I really, really enjoyed yeah. that. That's a lot of fun yeah. to do. So right now, uh, I'm on tour with School of Rock. Ah. I'm working with Andrew Lloyd Webber, and absolutely great show and a, a wonderful place to sit and be a bass player. You are one yeah. well-connected bass player. I'm real blessed, and I'm very grateful for my life as it's been. Well, tell us a little bit about your gear, your equipment. You're playing MTD basses, yes. aren't you? Um, I love Mike Tobias. Well, I love Mike, too. And a million years ago, I tried to get him to make something small for me. And he did. He made a headless bass, and he called me one day. He said, I have good news and I have bad news. And I've told this story before. He said, the good news is the bass is done. The bad news is I put this bridge on it. It weighs too much. The bass is too heavy, and you're not going to want it. So that was the end of that. So we fast forward to 2004, and I said to him, Michael, I really would like a smaller bass that just sounds great. Can we do it? And basses just started appearing. Um, Are we he, talking four strings exclusively, uh, primary? All five strings that he made for me, and they started appearing. And um, I've been playing these basses all these years, and this year, a couple of years ago, he called me, and he said they've decided they want to release the bass as my signature model and uh, you know I'm thrilled because not just because it's personal but because it is a great bass there are a million bass players out there that are wanting to lighten the weight on their shoulders I'm one of them that have issues with their hands or their arms but they don't want to compromise the sound and the thing with this bass is there's no compromise in the sound the sound it, the low end is so big and so focused and punchy and it's everything you want it to be, and it's it's versatile. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. So, I'm thrilled to death that we've put these out there to the public, and I'm hoping that people love them as much as I do. Well, my five strings, I have two. One is fretted, one is fretless. They are not MTD. They are Tobias. This oh, was yeah. before okay. MTD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. went to his shop on Coenga out yeah. here in in That's LA right. before he moved back That's east, right. and uh, yeah, I just I, I love both of them very yeah. much. What about the future, Lynn? I mean, you've done an awful lot, and you've got a very impressive resume, but uh, somehow you don't look to me like you're ready to slow down. What else would you yeah. like to do that you haven't done yet? Yeah, not ready to slow down. I do a fair amount of writing, and I still do music directing. I work with Jackie D. Shannon when she's out and does stuff. Um, getting back more into my writing and I'd like to actually go back in the studio and record was, a bunch of stuff. It what the world needs now, is yeah. it uh, Jack? Okay. Yeah. You're so smart. My um, father was a rock and roll great. DJ in the yeah. 50s and 60s, okay. so I know a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I usually music direct every year for the Movie Guide Awards, and it's a, it's a big award show here in L.A., and I write all the music for it. Wow. 
So I usually have a couple months where I just focus on inspiration and write a lot of music. So that's a, that's a really great way to start in a year. And so, yeah, my plan is to, to do some recording and start putting some of this stuff down. Yeah. Well, that's great. We'll all look forward to seeing and hearing lo- lots more writing, arranging, great. music directing from you. Thank you. Keep it coming. Thank you. Check the, uh, check the tour schedule for School of Rock. We're all over the United States, so come say hi. Yeah, yes, you are, and yes, we yeah. will. Last question, Lynn. Yeah. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? And you can't say a flute player or a, you know something outside of music. Yeah, I probably would have been a veterinarian. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You love animals? Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. I, do you have any, many at home? No pets, no plants. That's what I always say when you're on the road. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah, well, I could definitely appreciate that. Well, it's so great getting to sit down with you, getting to know you a little bit, and uh, getting them to know you a little bit. Absolutely. So thank you very much, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. And much luck and continued success to you always. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. On location in sunny Hollywood, California, with our friend Lynn Keller. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. What the world needs now is love, sweet.